I know you guys are upset with BPI and how they're raising their trust fees for their investment funds. The increase seems unnecessary and I know a lot of you think it's undeserved. So a lot of you have asked me, will I continue to put in my money in BPI investment funds? And you've also asked me, what are the alternatives out there? This is what we'll look to cover in this video, so let's go. But before anything, if you are new to this channel, Hi, I'm Mark. Uh, it's nice to meet you. And in this channel, I cover a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. If you've been fortunate enough to not hear this stressful announcement, I'm sorry to break it to you, but this is your announcement. For a lot of the BPI investment funds that I've talked about in this channel across BPI ALFM and BPI Wealth, BPI is raising their per annum trust fees. The trust fees vary according to the investment fund. One of my favorite funds, the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund, used to have its per annum trust fee at 0.75%. And now, in 2024, BPI is doubling this to 1.5%. I won't get into the detail of comparing all the funds available out there. In this video, I'm only talking about my favorite one, the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund. It tracks the ever-important S&P 500. I've talked a lot about this in my previous videos. Most of my investments actually do go to this investment fund. And while I don't have time to compare all funds out there, what I've done in preparing for this video is to find the alternatives find the other UITFs that are also mimicking the performance of the S&P 500. And from my research, I have found three worthy alternatives that you guys might want to consider, and this is what I'll share with you today in no particular order. So the first on this list would be BPI's main competitor, BDO. BDO is offering the similarly named and similarly performing BDO US Equity Feeder Fund. You'd be happy to know that BDO's per annum trust fee is just at 0.5%. So this is even lower than BPI's trust fee before the increase. What you have to take note though is that while the per annum trust fee is lower, the minimum amount to start investing in this fund is higher at 500 US dollars. So once you've put in the initial amount of $500, for you to be able to reinvest and top up this investment fund, you would actually need another $500 each time. So spoiler alert, for the other alternatives, the subsequent top-ups, the additional investments, are actually much lower than your original invested amount. So for these three alternatives that I'm talking about today, I actually see BDO as the less attractive one. The second UITF that is mimicking the S&P 500 is offered by Metro Bank. Metro Bank similarly has the same interest rate of BPI before the increase. So this is at 0.75%. Similar to BDO, the initial investment here would be $500 as well. But additional top-ups, subsequent investments, you only need $100 each time. So unlike BDO wherein you have to save up another $500 or about 30,000 pesos, for Metro Bank, you only need to be able to save up $100 each time. So depending on when you're watching this video, that's probably going to be between 5,000 to 6,000 pesos. So it's not as limiting as BDO. It's a little easier to be able to reinvest in this investment fund. And lastly, let's move on to the third alternative. This time, it's being offered by East West Bank. The offer of East West Bank is actually quite compelling. Their per annum trust fees are the same at BDO at 0.5%. So these would be the lowest interest rates that we currently have in the market for these US equity feeder funds that are tracking the S&P 500. And for the minimum amount to start investing, it's also at $500. So it's the same between Metro Bank, East West, and BDO. If you wanted to top up, the additional investments would be at $200 each time. So this is a little higher than Metro Bank, so it's a little more challenging. But amongst the three alternatives here today, I would actually consider East-West as probably the best of breed. I mean, its per annum trust fee is the lowest, again, at 0.5%. And while the subsequent investments are actually higher than Metro Bank, the $200 would still be a far cry from BDO's subsequent investments of $500. And do also note that BDO, Metro Bank, and East-West have their target fund as the iShares Core S&P 500 ETF. So this is one S&P 500 ETF. The one that BPI is tracking is the Spider S&P 500 ETF. They aren't the same, 
but for the most part, they are similar. Both the Spider S&P 500 and the iShares Core S&P 500 are tracking the S&P 500. And now with these alternatives in place, will I be moving my investments from BPI to either Metro Bank or East West as the better alternatives here? Well, um, the answer is I'm still thinking about it. The UITFs from Metro Bank and East West actually have very compelling offers but I'm still doing some computations. If in fact, it's gonna be worthwhile, what I'm really evaluating would be the amount that's needed for subsequent investments. I think that this is definitely where BPI holds an advantage for the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund in the US dollar denomination. The minimum amount to start an investment is just $800. And for subsequent investments, it can be as low as $1. And if you are looking at the BPI US Equity Feeder Fund, in terms of its peso class denomination, for the subsequent investments, it can be as little as 50 pesos or a few pesos at a time. I know that the 1.5% being imposed by BPI with us as hostage really sucks. I mean, I wish they didn't have to increase that. But their minimum investments, again, let's peg it at $1 or 50 pesos is still a compelling offer because you don't have to save as much when you want to keep reinvesting in the fund. And as shared in a lot of my previous videos, that's actually my strategy to be investing in the fund as regularly as possible. In fact, I've been doing it daily because doing it regularly lowers my cost of acquisition on an average. So I haven't been waiting for dips. I haven't really been closely observing the market when to come in. For me, it's been about regular investing. I've mentioned I've been investing $1 daily. Uh, recently, I've actually increased this. Sometimes it's $2, sometimes it's $3. So having that as my savings per day makes it much easier to be investing. Will it be worthwhile? That's what I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to answer the question, will the regular investing actually make up for the higher per annum trust fee? Or will the lower per annum trust fees still really matter? The only downside there is I'm actually having to save up my money. In the case of Metro Bank, it's at $100 each time. And with East West, it will be $200 each time before I can reinvest. Again, that's what I'm trying to compute for and really trying to see. I'll cover that in a future video. And before ending this video, I just wanted to give you a heads up. Some advice that as we've seen with BPI, BPI lowered the minimum investment amounts last year, but this year they jacked up the per annum trust fees. And while the per annum trust fees of the other banks are actually lower, this can also change in the future. I guess I've talked about BPI the most, having banked with them for the longest time, but I am open to moving my business to other banks. And that's what I'm looking to share here with you. And I would suggest that you subscribe to this channel so that you are in on the latest based on my observations and data that I'm collecting. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy investing!